Guys, this is not clickbait. I sold some of my crypto and I'm going to talk about the reasons why I've done that on this video. This is one of the main things, man. This is really scary. Now, this is really good software and I know a lot of you don't have access to it, right? So I'm going to cover what it is and what it means. Now, this is smart money trends. It's a really, really good indicator. So accurate and so good for sort of understanding where we are in the market. Um, and now this is the stable coin holdings of smart money investors. So for those that are new, what smart money? Smart money are people who consistently make profits in crypto, who consistently make money over and over again. I track their wallets, I look at what they're buying, I try to spot trends early, and it tends to be uh, quite a good way to make gains in this space. Um, now here you can see, a clear downtrend in the stable coins that they have in their wallets. Now, what does this mean? This means that they are deploying or have been deploying capital into crypto um, at the right time, look, as well. Look, just in the bear market, they started to DCA in and then they started to go really heavy coming into all the way into 2024. Now, there are all time lows. So, their stable coin balance means. It's at all-time lows, meaning that they're running out of stable coins, right? Their, their, their wallets are so heavily invested in the space um, that they have very little capital to put in. Now, where's the money going to come from? Retail, but we're a little bit early uh, for that retail FOMO. Now, the thing that worries me about this, let's look at the last time we had this all-time low on the stable coins, right? So April 2021 is when the smart money was at all-time lows. And what happened just after that? After we hit all-time lows, they started to go back into stable coins. So they started to sell their crypto and go back into stable coins. Now, let's have a look at April 21 on the chart so we can see what happened around that sort of period of time. Now, April 21 here, April 21, so we're February, March, April. It just happened to be the exact top of this FOMO euphoria peak where the stable coins on the smart money was at all time lows and we had this massive, massive pullback afterwards. It wasn't the top. We come back and we pumped back up. But look at this reversal that we had all the way from 60,000 down to 30,000. And no one really expected this. Um, no one really expected this 50% pullback in crypto. A lot of people were saying the bull run is finished, the bull run is over, and those people again got wrecked. This was the hardest thing to trade, guys. This was almost impossible to trade. People were so bullish up here saying Bitcoin's going to $200,000, Bitcoin's doing this. People were so bearish at 30K, Bitcoin's going to 10,000, and it went back to like 68,000. It's the hardest thing to trade. Don't ever think you're smarter than the markets. Never think you're smarter than the markets. So many people got wrecked here. FTX were getting liquidated left, right and center with their uh, their, their trades. Loads of people were wrong and um, it's impossible to trade. What we can do is we can look at the data. Why, did, why was smart money wallets uh, at hot, stable holdings at all-time lows? What happened? And then we completely crash. So in this video, I'm going to try and point out some of the euphoria signs that we have in the space right now. And um, it's not just uh, it's not just this the smart money guys. I'm seeing them invest into meme coins. They're selling their long term holds and buying meme coins. So it seems even the smart money have gone into this euphoria hysteria craze, um, and it's 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 a little alarming. Um, so here we can see really good post here about we're entering the euphoria stage. So I want to talk about how to make money in crypto and investing in general. There's, there's two simple rules. You accumulate in despair. You accumulate in fear. You sell in euphoria. You take profits in euphoria. I don't think anyone can criticize um, that methodology. And that's what I tend to do. When was I buying render? I was buying render when the banks were collapsing, when USDC depegged, everyone was losing their minds. Um, you know, people were calling for, Gareth was calling for 10K Bitcoin. That's when I was accumulating it. And that's when you should feel this up only mentality. That's when you should get this euphoria. For, in my opinion, you should be like, when the market's crashing and everyone's getting out and everyone's panicking, that's when you should be like, yes, it's time to buy, let's go. 
not right now, in my opinion, when every, any, everything's euphoric. Um, smart money have nearly emptied their bags into the crypto space. They're buying meme coins. Um, oh, look, meme coins is a gamble for me. It's a bit of fun, but it's not a serious investment. I wouldn't sell my long-term holds <laughs> to buy meme coins, which I'm seeing them do on chain. is very alarming. Um, what I do do when I buy meme coins is I take a little bit of profit from wins. For example, we made 10x. We made a few 10x's in the last month or so. So I take some wins uh, from those and then I reinvest them into, into meme coins as a gamble, as a hedge. But to be selling your long holds and buy meme coins in this euphoria peak. And here you can see long term BTC holders reduce profit taking despite all time highs. A glass node report notes a decline in profit taking activity by long term holders following Bitcoin's March all time highs. The balance between long term holders and new demand suggests the market is in early euphoria stage or price discovery. However, Glassnode uh, warns of potential price drawdowns, noting historical corrections exceeding 10% uh, and 25%. So not everyone is bullish, and it's and it's uh, it's good to see. But I would say the majority are talking about more upside, more upside, pump, 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 uh, Bitcoin halving. Um, and usually the majority are wrong. Usually the majority are wrong. I'm not saying we're going to crash 50%, guys. I'm just saying I'm expecting some sort of a correction, some sort of a pullback. And this this date, this data here is just uh, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. It, we've we can see what what's going on on chain with people's balances now. We've we've got such an advantage over last cycle. We can see what all the smart wallets are doing. We can see what all the insiders are doing. We can see when they're selling, when they're buying. Um, we've got such an advantage and I don't really want to waste this data. Next up, meme coins going through the roof. Look at this, parabolic. Uh, we've got a dog with a hat on its head, <laughs> a 3.5 billion market cap. This is, his, this is what happens in euphoria. This is what happens in hysteria. People forget things come down. People forget they crash. People forget they pull back. People just start chucking money into anything. A, a coin with a dog with a with a hat on with no utility no fundamentals uh, just just crazed crazed euphoria um pumping to the upside doing huge volume now i'm not saying this is going to come down we saw doge go to 60 to 100 billion market cap i'm just saying this has risen a, a hell of a lot in a very short amount of time and people haven't really been taking much profits um a correction is due um now, I started taking some profits recently, and I know I got a lot of, uh, you know, hey, market, you're, you're selling too early, whatever. But you've got to understand, we made so much in, in, in March. We made so much profits. I mean, uh, rain done a 10x. You know, I, 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 I don't, I take little bits of profits as it go up. And here you can see nice 3x on rain, sold 50% of my position. I actually ended up selling all of it um after that i've sold a lot of my high risk coins guys and i know a lot of you don't have the money to be in the patreon and stuff like that so just letting you know if you do get into any of the projects that i talk about first of all it's not financial advice do your own research it's incredibly risky investing in crypto and you should always be doing your own research you're not going to see when i sell things but when i buy these high risk tokens a lot of the time i'm not planning to hold them into the bull run I hope they can turn into long-term holds. Like trade has nearly done a 10x from where we got in and that is going to become a long-term hold, but I'm still going to trade it. I'm still going to, if it pumps nearly 10x, I'm going to take some profits, guys. If it crashes 50%, I'm going to buy back in. I'm a bit of a trader. Um, the low risks that I hold, like stacks, uh, like render, I will DCA out slowly, but I won't sell them all. So I've always got my foot in the door because I might be wrong. Maybe the market does go to 200k from here and we don't see a pullback at all. And it is up only. I'm aware that I could be wrong and uh, I want to have my foot in the door and, and have exposure. So here you can see T-Pad flipped this, sold it all. Sell alert, chat sold a hell of a lot of chat um so i made a lot of money on this and i sold a lot it has had a massive pullback i still do have a bag of chat I sh it's kind of the high risk low risk i love what they could do i love the possibility of what this could be in the solana ecosystem if i'm wrong and chat explodes i want to have a bag so i've still got a bag ghx sold it all made a lot of money sold it all 
Um, here you can see, congrats guys, another double in the bag, sold 50%. So when you take out your initial, when you, when you double up on a token and you take out your initial, anything else on there is profit. So even if the market does pull back, when you sell, it's all profit. Sell, sold it all, Solana, is a long-term hold, but here you can see 16th of March, Solana at $190, lovely gains. Now we, we, we rode Solana up from $23, guys, so we didn't sell any all the way from $23 to 190. I sold 30%, which is was more than my initial that I put in, was some profit, so now I've won on Solana no matter what happens. The rest of the money I've got on Solana is, is, is completely free money, it's profit, so whenever I sell that, it's profit. Even if it comes back to $23, it's still profit that I've got in there, um, so I can't lose. If it goes up to the upside, I still have 70% in there, which I do expect it to go to the upside, um, so I win-win. If it comes down and I sell, I've won. If it goes up, I'm, I'm winning, and I'll continue to DCI, uh, DCI out as it goes up. Render, sold at 12.30, so sold 30% of my render, same again, massive amounts of money. We've done a 25X on render, guys. If you put 10K in that, you made quarter of a million dollars. It's crazy money. Uh, QO, QO RPO, again, sold. Um, so we made huge amounts of money in March. And um, this isn't everything, right? There's there's some other stuff we sold as well that were high risks. Um, YAI, uh, we recently took profits on as well. That done like, I done like an eight or nine X um, from when we initially got in. Um, so I've taken some profits. I've got a massive stack of stable coins now to buy if the market comes down. And I've got my low risks still in crypto, you know, that I think are going to go up. I mean, if, if, if render goes up like a 2x, we're on like a 40x because we got in so early, right? If it goes up 3x, we're on a 60x. Um, so we, we those gains are going to compound massively if the market does take an upside. Or I just think we're going to take a downside. A little bit of a correction. Um, now, another thing to take into consideration is how much Bitcoin's pumped so fast. Now, it was sixteen thousand dollars, guys. Now, those guys who put in five million dollars at uh, sixteen thousand, they're sitting on twenty-one million, and a lot of whales were putting in five million, ten million. A lot of whales were putting in five hundred million, um, and they're now sitting on colossal amounts of money. And as we saw, we're entering euphoria stage, and no one seems to be taking any profits. Um, is it due? Is it coming? Next up, the DXY. The DXY started to break out, guys. Look at this level we have here. The DXY is the dollar. Now, historically, the DXY goes up. Bitcoin tends to come down. We're breaking through this key level. Now, look how consistent this level is. Was previous support here. Was resistance, resistance, was support here. Uh, we've got support and resistance here. Uh, we've got another level here. Another level here, another level here, another level here. Massive, massive pivot point. If we can hold above this, this is huge resistance, guys. And the DXY might start pushing up. Uh, something to take into consideration. Now, another thing, liquidity. Look at liquidity building up down these levels. Yes, we've pushed up recently and we've taken out a lot of the liquidity up here. We do have some liquidity up at 74K+, plus, um, which we could go up and tap. So I'm always... I'm, not, I'm trying to remain neutral. I'm not trying to get too bearish. I'm not trying to get too bullish. I'm trying to remain neutral and have a strategy for whether the market goes up or down. If I have a plan for up and a plan for down, no matter what it does, then I'll win, right? Um, I'm in a short position. It's currently in profit. I'm holding it open. I've got a stop loss at break even. If it pushes up, the, the, the trade will close and I'm at, I haven't lost any money because it's got a stop loss. If it goes down, I might make five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 because... You know, there's some leverage on there. Liquidity down here. To me, there's a lot of liquidity down here worth grabbing. It's 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 hotter to the downside than it is to the upside. So we might see a liquidity grab to the downside. The market is pumped up quite a bit. It's pumped up quite a bit. Um, you know, downside would make more more sense to me. You know, short short, short pumps, long dumps. Um, next up, DXY. Very very scary. Let's look at the DXY, uh, sorry, the NASDAQ. Look at the NASDAQ. Now, crypto doesn't always follow the NASDAQ, guys. I know this, but it does tend to follow a lot of the time. So it's worth, it's another indicator that's worth looking at. What I'm doing here is looking at confluence. Um, so we've got multiple, multiple signs um, that indicate a correction is coming. 
here support here support here support now clearly we have this trend line here um, we have this clear trend line you could say actually it started around here potentially uh, and we're clearly breaking the trend line like we broke through we retested we we tried to get back above we broke through we're coming down to this line here you see this bot ma we're going to get a sell signal if we close above if we close below this we're going to get a sell sell signal from the smc bot and it's pretty accurate this bot guys i mean look look at the buy signal down here on the smc bot after the buy signal massive pump sell signal dump sell signal dump sell signal dump uh, buy signal pump buy signal pump um, it's pretty accurate now look at the last few times we had this uh, we have these trend lines and they break trend line here to the upside breaks what happens crash to the downside uh, trend line here pump to the upsides break trend line crash to the downside time and time again guys this was a massive pump this was a massive pump trend trend to the upsides the moment you broke through this trend line break to the downside and i think it's safe to say we do have a trend line to the upside here and we are breaking to the downside maybe this time's different and we'll see this fake out and pump maybe we just won't crash very much right that's something that we need to be aware of but um something to take into consideration the nasdaq is not looking amazing either Another thing I'm a little bit concerned about, Bitcoin price below 80,000 at halving could trigger mining losses. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, but I'm seeing a lot of news sources say that after the halving, the Bitcoin rewards are reduced, right? We all know that. That happens every cycle. Miners need, the, the Bitcoin value needs to be higher for miners to be profitable. Now, it's getting pretty high, the level now, because every time it halves, we're getting into serious amount of money. And they're saying that Bitcoin needs to be above 80,000 for them to be profitable. Now, that's a lot of money. And imagine if Bitcoin does pull back to 60,000 or even, let's say, worst case scenario to 50,000. Um, then they're, they're going to be operating at a loss. And what happens each cycle is the miners go into losses. They try to sustain it and they end up going into liquidation or they end up closing up business. Something that's different this cycle is the GPU mining, GPU mining. And AI mining is 10 to 15 times more profitable than Bitcoin mining. So what I'm a little bit concerned about is that a lot of these mining companies are going to start making a loss. And the execs who are just in it for money, who don't understand what Bitcoin is and and and, and how high it can go. Because I think Bitcoin is eventually going to go to a million. I might be wrong, but that's, that's what I feel. Um, and a lot of these execs might be looking at numbers and they started the mining companies to be profitable. They go into losses and they're like, Do you know what? We could actually turn this into a mining farm and make 10, 15 times the amount anyway. Let's get out of Bitcoin. Let's start mining GP. Let's just start mining AI compute power. That's something that we need to take into consideration. What happens if the mining power drops after the halving? Potentially, the hash rate goes down. What happens when the hash rate goes down? The security of BTC is questioned and we might see a downside off the back of that. Again, I'm not saying we're going to sit below 80k. Maybe we skyrocket to 90k, 100k and sit above 80k. I'm not even saying that 80k is the threshold, right? This is just the data that I'm looking at. It's very hard to calculate mining costs because every mining facility is different. Something to take into consideration. Now we have this. CPI completely crashed. Uh, sorry, CPI has increased. Uh, so inflation is going up, guys. And we have a long, we have 20 days or so until uh, Jerome Powell is going to speak at the Fed on the 1st of May. So we've got this 20 day period now of waiting to see what's going to happen. Historically, inflation goes up. We're not going to get rate cuts. So the rate cuts are now going to potentially be pushed back uh, even further. And a lot of people were expecting rate cuts before the election. We might not even see rate cuts before the election. And is, is this priced in right now? Because to me, we're not seeing, we haven't seen much of a crash in the markets considering there's still a lot of euphoria in the space. We have token 2049 coming out. Now this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a clutch, but sometimes when you have these big events in crypto, you have a sell the news event. So not only do we have CPI inflation, uh, the Dubai event, the Bitcoin halving, our miners are going to be profitable. We've got tons of these massive events and catalysts happening at the same time. And I'm a bit worried that we're going to see a massive sell the news event. 
Another issue we have is we have May approaching. Now, if you're new to crypto or you're new to investing, there's this massive saying, sell in May, go away. And it has become quite a self-fulfilling prophecy where a lot of investors just sell in May anyway, because it tends to be a very a poorly performing month and a lot of people just do sell off now when you get a lot of people expecting a sell-off in may what happens people start to sell off before may approaches um because they want to front run it why would you wait until the first or second of may um why not just sell slightly before the first of may now we have jerome powell speaking on the first of may and we know it's already going to be hawkish because we know inflation's gone up that's not what the Fed want to see. They're going to be talking very negatively, and we know that's going to happen. Now you've got a sell in May and a, a, a hawkish um, Jerome Powell speaking on the 1st of May. Something to consideration, uh, take into consideration, guys. Again, just so much confluence. Um, expectations of rate hikes not happening, right? So we already know that. BTC had a little bit of a sell-off on the CPI data, still maintains in this euphoria phase. We are approaching the Bitcoin halving in the next few days or so we do have hong kong coming as well which it could go either way which i'll talk about in a second but we're in this kind of pattern at the moment right so this is kind of this is support down here this is where you long so every time it comes down here you long you take a long here you make you made a lot of money you take a long here you made a lot of money when it touches the top you're short you're short here you made a lot of money you're short here you made a lot of money right you guys know how to trade uh, these patterns Right now, we're coming to the end of this pattern. Great buy signal by uh, by the SMC bot down here as well. Look at this, buy signal at 41,000, no sell signal. Also, the SMC bot, I will say here, look, look how well it's respected this, this, this SMC trend line. It's come down, it's held up, it's bounced up. Great long position, great long position. If we close below this level, which I potentially think we might do with every, all the signs I've just talked about, we might see some downside. We're going to see a sell signal, actually, for the first time and since 40K on the daily, we might get a sell signal and a correction. If we break up above this, super bullish. We're in price discovery. If we break up and stay above 74K, we're in new all-time highs. We're coming into the halving. We've got Hong Kong ETF. We might go into some maximum historia euphoria phase. And the breakout of this could be potentially taking us up to the top. The breakout target would be 85K, which I think is a lot. I'd be looking more around 80K. The breakout target for the downside, if we break down using the same formula, would be 52K. OK, so this 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 pattern is telling us that if we break up potentially 85K, if we break down 52K now, <laughs> I'm not saying we're coming down to 52 uh, 52k 52k I think we're going to have a lot of buying pressure here guys 61 I'm just saying uh, that these things are possible and we need to take in, take them into consideration especially what I was talking about here right and what happened last cycle um would that be no when 52k wouldn't be quite a 50% correction it's not even 52k wouldn't even be that big of a correction it would be from 70k to 52k. It's not that much, guys. It really isn't. It sounds like a lot. And I know a lot of you will say it's impossible. Um, we also would be tapping this level again, tapping this level again, tapping this level again. So something to take into consideration, guys. Now, another thing I want to look at here is the Hong Kong uh, ETF is coming. So Hong Kong set to approve its first spot Bitcoin ETF in April. We don't know whether there's going to be a pump or a dump on this. Now, we don't, we don't have the grayscale situation, um, you know, where tons and tons of people got in at discount. Um, there are some rumors that Hong Kong or, uh, are looking to dump Bitcoin through their own ETF. So we will see. If that is happening, it's going to be sharp and fast. So as soon as it gets approved, you're going to see a sharp down cand a candle to the downside where everyone is expecting this massive pump to the upside. And it just starts to dump, dump, dump. Similar to what um, the Grayscale done. I had a buy the uh, buy the news long on um, their last ETF, which was wrong. And I said, if we start to see a reversal, we cross through this line of support, I'm going to switch to short. And what happened? It just kept dumping and dumping and our shorts ended up paying out. Same thing I'm going to do with this ETF. If it starts to pump and pump and pump, then we know money's coming in from Hong Kong. If it starts to dump rapidly, we know that they're dumping. Um, so I'm keeping my options open. 
this might happen absolutely you know I'm, I'm fully aware guys we might completely pump from here and i'm fine with that my situation now is i have a massive bag of uh stable coins so i have a massive bag let me just sort this out massive bag of stable coins and then i have a massive bag of low risks so my low risks i will hold you know things like render stacks we've got um imx in there we're up massively on pretty much most of our low risk plays um you know we're at 20x on casper we're up over 20x on render um my my stable coins uh, i've got a massive bag of stable coins ready for any pullback are we going to go up forever not likely right at some point even if we do pump to the upside here at some point we're going to get a reversal and come down like we're not just going to go up only forever at some point we're going to get some sort of pullback some sort of correction and when bitcoin pulls back altcoins tend to pull back and that's where i'll be looking to dca back in but my stable coins there's nothing wrong with having dry powder there's nothing wrong with having cash and this is profit as well guys so it's not just I know you always want to be in the market, you want to buy everything, but this is profits. Um, you know, even if the market does continue, our low risks continue to print profit, um, and our stable coins is already profit. But you know, when the market pulls back, I'll be looking to DCA and get back into altcoins. I love trade, you know, poly trade. I think it's a great project. I think it's gonna do massive things. You know, we just almost made like 10X on it. I pulled out so much money from trade. I was like, this is crazy. And I expect it to pull back. And if it pulls, let's say for example, I took 10K out of trade and it pulls back 50%, um, then I can put my 10K back in there and double my holdings. I have double the holdings that I had before from from a 50 percent correction if it doesn't pull back and just keeps going up and up that's then it then it does you know that's absolutely fine maybe i'll dca in a little bit maybe you know i'll buy back in at what 25 percent more than than i sold at um i just think looking at all these signs is very likely we're about to see um a bit of a pullback after the halving i'm happy to sit in this for a few weeks so yes if bitcoin does start pumping up here that's fine I can sit here for a few a few weeks waiting for a correction. If Bitcoin goes up straight up only to 200k, um, whatever, I have massive bags in low risks. Most of my money is in low risk plays um, like Render, like Casper that we're already massively up on. So, you know, if Bitcoin goes up here, I'm, I'm printing. If it comes down, I'm ready to buy. If it goes up, I'm making money. It's a win-win situation. So I have a strategy for both. Let me know what your strategies are, guys. Um, let me know what you're doing. Let me know what you think. Um, do you think we are overbought right now? Uh, do you think the market's going to pull back? I just think we've got so many events. Is The May the 1st is going to be very interesting. That's the real day. I'm trying to sell before that everything gets way bearish. I don't want to be selling in a crash. Um, I, I like to sell... I like to sell at the tops when market's pumping. I might not be selling the top right here. Um, but this is where you sell. You don't sell when you're in a crash. A lot of people, if we do crash, a lot of people are going to be selling down here and their bags are really going to be massively down. I'm taking profits on the gains that we've made and making an assumption that at some point we're going to have a pullback. So that's it, guys. Uh, if you want to join the Patreon, um, links below to join the Patreon. We have some spaces available there where you can see all my buy and sell alerts. Um, you can see uh, my whole portfolio. Um, you can get smart alerts where we track sm the smart money to see what they're doing on chain. You also can get this SMC, but you see where we got these buy and sell signals from the bot. Uh, you can get this, which basically just helps you um, what to do with what to do in the market, when to buy, when to sell. Uh, that's it, guys. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one.